nerd. On this video, I'm with my girlfriend and I have four different sets of two watches and we're gonna compare contrast and we'll talk a little bit about price uh, towards the end, but we're not gonna get into deep numbers. Before I do go into it though, I wanna keep announcing my Chanel chain giveaway and I'll be giving this out as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you wanna be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. Let's hop into it. Okay. So let's first start with uh, the section. So this section is date just. Um, we have two different uh, pieces, very similar, but also different in a lot of ways. I'm gonna unveil it. She hasn't seen any of these watches yet. So uh, I'm very excited because it's not just all Rolex, just the first uh, one is, and we have some other pieces. We have some uh, mid-level brands too. So what do you think? What are your first impressions on these two? So yeah, this one I feel like is much more fancy and mainly because like you said the gold and everything like versus this one it's gold and is this sterling silver or just oh uh, no this is stainless steel stainless steel well there are the, all rolexes this is white gold bezel okay. so this particular one is a fluid i'll pop in images as we go along uh so you can see um and follow along with us uh, but they are both the same size yeah. uh, these are both very similar pieces the bracelets are different though. This is a oyster bracelet, which is on most cases, and this is Jubilee. Now, which bracelet do you like better? And it's not apples to apples, because this is two-tone, but um, like, what do you find is a little bit classier? Than the other one? I would definitely have to say, and people kind of disagree with me on this, but I'd have to say this would be a classier one. Really? And I think, the, comment Class down below, because I, I like that. Classier in the way that like, you would just wear out. Oh, you mean the like, whole watch? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the bracelet. Well, we were talking about the... Oh, sorry. So, no, 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 you're good. But uh, I definitely agree with you uh, okay. on, on your scenario. I think a lot of people will agree that this is the best uh, everyday piece in stainless steel. Now, um, but let's talk about just a little bit about the bracelets very quickly. So this is the Oyster. So it's mm -hmm. three link and this is the five link Jubilee. So yes. what are your opinions on that? I know it's not, they make it in stainless steel too. They make it without the gold, um, the Jubilee. So what is your you know, opinions on the bracelets? Like, what do you think about them? Well, I'd say this one is much nicer because you get two different colors of it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Right. But I, I'm just saying in, in steel. Oh. No, but the, I get, I understand what you're saying, but you like the different, you know, the high polish. Yes, with, it's yeah. classier in that sense. I was just saying that this one is classier in the way that you could just wear it anywhere and it could be something as someone can see it as very expensive or not as expensive but I would think it's something that you can wear like on an everyday yes. basis and then this is like more classier because of the gold I would have I, to say. I very much agree with you. Now uh, one quick thing we will move on uh, very quickly. What do you think about the different dials? So this is silver sunburst. And this is more, yeah, this is a champagne. This is very famous Rolex dial mm -hmm. and they're two tone and gold options. Um, but which, which, what do you think, is, what do you like about them? They're both sunburst too. Um, well, they kind of look the same, just different colors or like different, like yeah. what you were just saying, but are you asking what I like better? Oh no, I was just saying like, what, what are your opinions on them? Like what, like? Um, I really like the way they both look, I think it's like plain and it adds a nice touch to both of the watches. But I, I would say this is much more classier just because I feel like everyone tries to get more gold. Like, yeah, and it's also you know very eighties, very yeah. status symbol uh, type of thing. I do talk about that in my review. I've reviewed each and every one, so if you want in depth uh, movements and everything, I will you know not get into that in this video because we have. A plethora of subjects but um, I definitely agree I, I we actually do agree on that we did not plan as you see there's papers over all the watches so this is first time experience she has not you know, dealt with these watches before uh, so let's head into our next subject now this is the oyster quartz so this is going to be a very quick um, really talk talking about because this and this are very similar and this and this you can tell yeah. are very similar but different at the same time i want to hear what do you want to talk about what, what do you think about these two pieces i've seen this one before and this like has always drew to me because like the blue just really stands out inside and it's like a different kind of blue which i really like and i feel like it would go with pretty much anything mm -hmm. but 
I just also think it's much more like fancier and something that like so you everybody think it's a little wears. classier just, just because a of the little dial. classier than this one but yeah. this is something you can wear like anytime I feel like this is something you can wear to a different occasion like a more fancier occasion because of what the case because of the bracelet um, uh, what, what about it makes it probably because the, the of the bracelet and just the inside of the what? The, no, bezel. the bezel. Oh, yeah. The bezel. Oh, the high polish? Yeah, the high polish. Oh, versus the fluted. That's yeah. very interesting. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah they, they, offer, they offer that in this uh, version too. But I like I like the this bezel on the Oyster Quartz uh, 17,000. I like the high polish. But on the regular Datejust, I prefer the fluted. Now, wh what do you think about this? Do you like the fluted bezel on this case? And do you like the different you know, bracelet and, and the dial and everything about it compared. This one, yes, it's very, like, very fancy and, like, the, like, the know. bezel? Yeah. yeah the, the, the bezel is very, um, just much more classier, obviously, than this one, but they're both very different. So I would say, like, especially, like, yeah, the bezel is very fancy and compared to thicker it's a thicker yeah, yeah it Whereas, definitely like, feels thicker yeah in case. um just compared to this one though i definitely say that um now the dial is different too we have to mention oh um, yes if you want to talk about yeah um, no. so that this dial is sunburst you, you know you can see this is a yellow i i consider this a very yeah, very much a different yeah like it's a it's a much brighter dial now out of the four what do you think is like the best watch if you can choose only one for every occasion? For every occasion, I would, I would still choose this one. Of course, no, yeah. that's fine. Um, I think I don't know. I would love uh, at this point in the video because we're halfway through here. Uh, what do you like best? I have the four in front of me, and I'll pop a, a you know few images. And what would you choose out of the four if you can choose one? Um, for everyday use and I, I think a lot of people will agree with you um, yeah. With this watch because this is probably out of all of them one of the best I do like the oyster quartz too um, But we will head on we will continue with the next uh, few pieces now Unveiling this this is the non Rolex size so half the video, but there is still Rolex in it um, There is two watches here. I'll put them up Actually, let's put them up here so these are very different, but very similar at the same time. And I wanted somebody, uh, this is a very debate. I actually made a video by myself on these two watches, but uh, I'm very opinionated. I, I, you know, I'm with watches every day. I wanted to share with my girlfriend who I, we really don't talk about a lot of watches together. What do you think about these two? Um, very quickly, I will mention this is solid gold. So it's not a big old plated or anything. This is a solid gold. What do you, what, what, they're very different and very similar, but I'll let you take the floor of uh, which one you gravitate towards. Yeah. I gravitate towards this one because I feel like you don't see a lot of people, and I may be wrong, but I feel like I don't see a lot of people wearing this kind, this just looks much more like old, not modern, just mm -hmm. much true, more old true. fashioned. Because of the I leather, could, maybe? The yeah. leather and the inside too just seems the like dial, a little the, way. the dial and everything like the way it's set up just seems a little bit different than usual like you wouldn't see a lot of people wearing it but like i said i'm not a watch person so, so i don't know so the, just so you know this is the gerard perigo ferrari and this is the rolex daytona um so this one you gravitate towards what do you think is more expensive now this is a good question um because this comes on a bracelet but this is solid gold you know so it, it's i'm very curious I would still say this is more expensive. Yeah, just because yeah. It's, it's solid gold. Um, and, you know, it's very interesting because before anybody's, if they presented these two watches, a lot of people would choose gold. And I know that sounds crazy to the watch people, but that's true. Um, in reality, though, this is a very hot piece. This one, you're right. You don't see many people wearing gold. It's just not a piece um, that you very much see. It's a very old man's look, a 38 millimeters um, chronograph. Uh, definitely, this is more versatile. Oh, oh, oh. Let, let's take you. So, what do you think is more versatile? What do you think is like an everyday? Uh, everyday, probably this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I knew you would say that. And just because of what the bracelet, the case, you just know. the whole thing, I just think it's much more.
casual, like something you would wear out on an everyday basis. If you, it just probably like, yeah, the bracelet, but also just, I think the whole watch in general. Mm -hmm. But what I do find cool also is like the different, like the, So the tachometers, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, very cool watch. So uh, if somebody were to buy this, they probably could buy, I don't know, five or so mm -hmm. before affording this. So this is five times less than this. Oh wow! Yeah, so it, it, around depending on uh, on where you get it, of course, and everything. But this is a very it probably this is more expensive than all the watches on the table so far. Yep. Yeah, because that's the detail that. But yeah. um, we are not done yet. We have one last category here, and this is a very interesting category. So both of these brands you have never heard of. I, I, I'm assuming you've never heard of them. Um, because Rolex everybody hears of, but these two you probably haven't had uh, any experience with. So this one, we have a Tag Heuer, and this is a professional line. This is actually my first luxury um, watch, and uh, I didn't know as many, uh, much about watches uh, before. And this is a very interesting Breitling. Uh, value in the market, Maybe, but we'll, we'll, I'll let you take the floor before I say any more. So, which one do you, you know, gravitate towards? Which one do you want to talk about first? Because we will um, definitely talk about both. For sure, this one really draws me. Really? Okay. Yeah. You want to talk? I think it's mainly the gold, but still, like, it seems, well, I'm probably wrong. It just seems a little more, mm, I don't know. It's much more heavy. And yes, it's a bigger, it's a bigger piece. Right, it's a true. huge, yeah, massive piece. But I also think this is very fancy, like something, and you probably have to be careful wearing out, like somewhere probably pretty fancy, I would say. But also, I like how it tells you the day, like sun. Yes, it is a day it day. Is a day yeah. So this is probably the one. Uh, well, Rolex, of course, you can beat around, uh, but this is probably the most toughest. You do not yeah. have to baby this watch. You oh, don't no, have to be okay. no. Um, and it, it's interesting that you say that. It may be because the gold uh, in there makes it seem a little softer, but this is 500 meters of water resistance. Everything on the table uh, here has the maximum of, actually this is 300. So this one's actually 200 meters less um, of this. So this is definitely a, well, I would not go diving. I don't recommend, there's not enough loom. There's, there's a lot of issues, but you can go swimming, beat it like a ton. You can destroy this watch if you want to and I'll still run. Yeah. Um, but it's very interesting, maybe the gold. Yeah, that just drew to me. And the AR coating, like it's a little purple mm -hmm. on the, there's a lot of AR coating um, on this particular piece. So let's talk about this because you gravitated towards it. Uh, you think it's very shiny? What, what, what? Yeah, it's much more shiny. I mean, uh, this one, this one is still very nice. Like I feel like when you kind of look at it in this way, it shines more than this one. But this one, I just maybe it's because I've never seen something like this before. Yeah, it just seemed huge. like something that you would really have to be careful of because I don't see. It just seems also more old-fashioned. Like interesting. Maybe, I don't know. That's just what I think because I've never seen a watch like that before. I believe but this is 44 millimeters, uh, 43 maybe, uh, might be 42, I don't think so. I have reviewed it though, um, but I just want to show you, it, you know, from comparison, uh, this is my wrist, and I, I have worn this piece before, and it is heavy. When you take it off, it's like relief, like, it's yeah, a, you it see how massive very... it is, yeah. And it's funny, you, you say it's a dress watch. Um, <laughs> Well, that's just show, the culture nowadays is the Daytona is a dress watch. So, um, in some certain some people say that it is, but it's very interesting. And this this one, you're not, you know, it's, you're typically not, not drawn, drawn to, to yeah, it yeah, much, at all. But I still think it's a casual watch, kind of like the first one that I saw. This one, but so like a date dress. I still think it's a little fancier, actually, more than that one. Like, so, so you would. Uh, I, sorry. No, 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 go on. So, what do you think is more expensive, this? Or the date dress. I'm curious. To... I. I would still think this is probably. Yeah, the you're you're 100 percent yeah. sure because of the name uh, yeah. Rolex. But of course, this is to me a thousand times better. Well, yeah, you will but... notice that this, uh, well, except for the Rolex Oyster Quartz, that this is the only one ticking on the table. Yes. 
So that ticking is a quartz movement, which is typically you'll find in cheaper end pieces and it gets a bad rap quartz. Uh, the oyster quartz on the other hand is probably better than most mechanical entry level pieces uh, because it's so cool. And we'll talk about that definitely in another video on quartz. Um, but uh, this one I will mention, oh, and the tag wire. The rest are pretty much dress watches except for the Daytona, um, the chronographs uh, on the table. But as you see, it is a turning yeah. bezel. So if, if this was a dive watch um, with lots of loom, you, you would time your dive with the bezel. That's oh, how you wow. Can really That's really cool. And you can time multiple things. Now, yeah. on the Type Hoyer, it also has it. Yeah. As you can see it here, it's a very, it's a good, um, it's a famous for this type of bezel. Mm -hmm. And it's, the action is very, very good. 120 click um, on this one. So. Uh, with all that said, you gravitated towards this. Um, what is your least favorite? You can be honest on the table um, that we've talked about. On the table, um, here, take it um, I don't really like this one. So the Daytona is the least favorite. Yes. Uh, would you like it in white dial if it was white instead of black? Do you um, think you would like it more? I think white would probably look a little better, yeah, yeah, better, yeah. yeah. But I still think I'm drawn to all of like rest rather as to that one. I didn't really find myself. It's fantastic. It's very refreshing yeah. to hear that because very few people, and I, I love it, uh, just because you know, I, I love it because you know it's a different opinion. Um, but you're definitely drawn towards the older, classier yeah. pieces, um, which is the Daytona is very classy, but. Um, definitely is very yeah you have to like it uh, and for people in the watch world they'll tell they go in and they say oh yeah the Daytona is my favorite I hear it all the time um, at ADs you know and everybody says it but really it's a lot of hype it's a lot of money in that in that involved um, in, in that world so so that's your least favorite um, what is your favorite on the table and I get it might change over time because that's my favorite I don't know what it is. I'm just really drawn to this one. Even yeah. I feel the like just, not, yeah. I just like the white is very classy and it just seems like fresh and new. Like, I don't know how to explain The silver it, dial just, with yeah. the though. That's very interesting. I really like that. That's a great opinion. I actually wear this all the time. I yeah. love this piece. Um, and I was about to buy this watch. I really? don't know if I ever told you. Yeah. I was almost about to pull the trigger, but you will see eventually when I do get it, uh, you will see the watch I bought and I'm gonna buy instead. So, uh, but I really do love this piece. This really was going to be, look at it's so classy on the wrist. It's small, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's chunky enough to be a sports watch. You can go swimming, so uh, basically, that. yeah, do anything in, in the Datejust line. That's something great about the Datejust and the Oyster Perpetual too. Um, but that's where I, I really, I wanna leave it here. Is there anything you wanna add onto these watches? Is there any, you know, thing else you wanna say to the audience before? Well, I just wanted to thank Daniel for having me on here, but also, um, I really like doing these kinds of videos just because I don't really know a lot and it gets me to think and know more about these kinds of watches. But um, I definitely have to say this is very, like all of these watches are very neat and, neat and there's different things about them that make it well, that's very nicely said. Um, I, I definitely agree. I think it's fantastic uh, to bring somebody on this channel who is not into you know, watches, uh, who, who doesn't know all the prices and everything about them, um, because you know it's kind of refreshing to talk about it and you liking the Breitling so much. Uh, I did find it interesting. You really don't. It's okay. You, I you're like just it. not a huge fan. Yeah. No, I, I like the fact that you're able to like twist it and yeah. stuff like that's really cool but i don't know something about just gray and black doesn't appeal to me oh much. the just dial the yeah. dial the, 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 yeah, the yeah. aesthetics appeal to you the yes. Much. Yeah, yeah. yes so um yeah this is definitely the most affordable on the table but it's just very interesting to know um from every uh, everything so that's where i want to leave it here i do want to keep reminding you of the chanel chain giveaway i will give that away as soon as we hit um, 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below.
Thank you, and I will catch you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.